thank you very much for coming. I'm very happy to be here at Semicon Taiwan and uh, tell you all a little bit about uh, the ABB Ability Digital Powertrain and what we think it can do for the semiconductor industry. So everybody's been talking about IoT and industrial IoT and ability and uh, artificial intelligence. We think that the next revolution really is a smart revolution. That's why we're all here, it's smart manufacturing. But it is also a revolution in itself. We've seen the energy revolution with renewable energy and we've seen the wind, solar, how all of that has evolved. And now we have also the robotics coming into the picture. And additionally, we all have a desire to monitor our processes much better, get more data. But a lot of times people get a lot of data, but they don't know what to do with it. That's where we want to make a difference. So what we're doing instead is we're looking at where can we actually, where do we have knowledge about the equipment and how can we capture that information so that we can process it with you or for you and thereby make more intelligent decisions on the processes. There's a lot of various topics that are being talked about. Virtual reality, augmented reality, we've got software defined machines, machine learning, time sensitive networking, big data, a lot of buzzwords are being thrown around. The problem is, a lot of times, there's not much behind it. And as, until we put something behind it, we're not really going to provide something to the industry that brings value. So how do we bring value into all of this? First of all, we want to know more. So we capture a lot of data. Then we need to process that data. We analyze it so that we can do more. That means that we sense, then we analyze, and then we act. But then we need to sense again to see how does this influence what we've done. So with that, we build up knowledge. And based on that knowledge, we should have a learning about what happens. So when we see a failure mode, we can automatically go back in the old data and see what data did we have that could potentially have predicted this. So it's a continuous cycle. It's not building an algorithm and we're done. I mean, in physics, you can just build an algorithm and then you're done, and that's fine. But when you're talking about predictive maintenance, there's a lot of factors that come into play, and it becomes an iterative process. You need to continuously look at your data, you need to continuously learn from your data. And that's why we're looking at a cloud-based solution because as a single entity, as a single plant, you don't have all the failure modes, fortunately, because then you would be having a lot of problems. But each individual plant has some aspect of issues through the lifetime of a product. And then when we accumulate all of that, then we can help you learn when could you potentially come into a situation where you might get a problem later on. And then we can have it fixed before you actually see a problem. And that's the whole purpose of all this sensing. So looking at what we call the digital powertrain all the way from the transformer, the drive, the motor, your bearings, and your rotating equipment, such as your pump. Adding sensors to all of these, yes, there's an added cost for that, obviously there is. But at the same time, the information that we capture should bring enough value to make it worthwhile. And by putting it in one system, we can create a holistic view so that whatever we measure on the bearing, might be an indication of something that's going on either on the motor side or on the transformer side. So with that, we can combine that data and then we can give you that analysis. Bringing it through a digital uh, analysis phase that then accelerates the efficiency or, uh, and predictability and the safety of operation. The drives in the installation are probably the smartest equipment and it's where we've had most of the information available. It's where we've had a lot of information about failure modes. We've seen a lot of temperature warnings, alarms, and whatnot from these devices because they have a lot of computing power. But other than that, they also bring a substantial energy saving. And they can be used to, they are used to optimize your process control, reduce the needs for process maintenance. Because as the drives become more intelligent, and with each generation, 
we have more and more knowledge about what we can do with these. And that means that we can also provide more and more intelligent information. So efficiency is important and how do we upgrade systems? And then functional safety is the next thing. Safety in all of our operation, not just for the machines, not just for the continuous operation, but also for the people operating the equipment is important. All of these things get now built in and controlled from the brains of the drive through your digital powertrain. So there's plenty of internal sensors that have been there for a while, but we're learning more and more how we can use that data to predict things, such as this ripple on the current. Now maybe we can start predicting what's going on in the motor. At the same time, we're adding a sensor to the motor that measures the vibration on the motor as well as the temperature on the motor. Now combining all these three data points, we have a lot more data to more accurately predict what's going on. And that's the purpose. It's getting the right information to provide, to provide, combine together so that we can provide these analysis. One of the things is also when there is something, then you need a response. You need some help. You can, all you can see in the system might be something is potentially going on, but how do I fix it? How do I prevent it from put it, get, causing downtime in my facility? Because downtime is important. Downtime is expensive. And that's where we then provide a remote assistance feature in the same system that you can then use the expert and knowledge of ABB and bring that into your facility without having to call someone, wait for someone to drive by and come into the facility. You can actually do it by remote and with all the safety that is built into this because of the extensive testing that's being done on the systems before we're deploying it and the way we're building safeguards in so that you need to locally acknowledge before someone remotely can do anything in your system. Also the condition monitoring. With that you get a continuous log of the data. So when there is an issue, and the only thing I can guarantee you is there will be an issue eventually. We all have issues. So let's not kid ourselves. There is no flawless production. All productions have issues. But the important thing is to have the data so that when there is an issue, we can go back and prevent it from happening again. Because repetitive failure is really what we need to avoid. And then there's the predictive maintenance. So once we've had a failure, then using that knowledge, what were the situation, and then going back and analyzing the situation. This is a system overview of how a system can be built today. It is already components that are available. So we have a, a series of drives connected into a gateway that then that gateway then connects into a cloud-based solution. Currently, that cloud is only on the external of the facility. From a Semicon perspective, maybe not the most desirable way of designing it, but we're also looking at decentralizing the cloud so that we can have internal clouds within the facility. And then when needed or if desired, have an ability to engage an external connection on a need basis. That way, avoiding the risk of people hacking into the facility and disturbing production. In the cloud, you will then get all the data captured. You can visualize from the cloud the data and you can send out alerts to various types of equipment, for example, via email or other ways through an app connection to your smartphone or things like that. That then goes into a customer portal where you have your whole plant visualized. Once you have that, it becomes a matter of looking at, well, there's some additional information I'd like. Well, maybe you then have an agreement with ABB that we additionally can monitor some of this data for you and use the collect collective experience from the entire semiconductor industry that we work with to help you get information on what's going on in your facility because of experiences we've had elsewhere with the equipment. We then provide an expert's report that then becomes available in your system. Now, this is all mostly done by computers, but of course, we can never replace human interaction. So there will also be a human interface where we then have direct engagement between the people in the factory and the people of ABB. But 99% uh, of all the things that we do in the factory, the more we can automate that, the more efficient we can be and the better are the chances that we can fix it as it happens. 
and not after it happens. Also, to make sure that you have the support because honestly, our offices here in Taiwan, for instance, they're not open 24 seven. People have to go home, they have families to take care of and we respect that. But offices are open all around the world, all the time. So we've linked all these offices in what we call Follow the Sun. Now we have a 24 seven support network that is linked. So we start on working on a case here in Taiwan. Well, at one point in time, the local people have to go to bed. Well, then maybe they transfer the case to an employee in India. When he goes to bed, he transfers it to someone in Europe, but then transfers it to someone in US. And by the time you get to work, someone has probably an answer for you from one of these locations along the way, depending on how complex the case is. I mentioned that we also have this sensor on, the, on our pumping, our motor equipment and our gears, so you can see them here. Um, what that does is, what's traditionally been, in quotes, a dumb piece of equipment, it's just mechanics, it's just metals. We're now adding a little bit of electronics to it so that we can actually start capturing data for analysis. That allows an app communication also, so your local tech can actually look at what's going on, what's my bearing temperature, are there any vibrations, and we can connect multiple, multiple motors into a gateway solution, or in the future also directly into the drives. The new generation of drives have embedded Bluetooth capability. And if that's enabled, then you can link the motors directly to the drive that it's running. Now the drive is capturing it. Now you have a local brain that can actually process the data for you. And that will know this sensor in advance. And that way you have a lot more that to do because it's all integrated into one system. That gives you better condition monitoring on your low voltage equipment. And it, it's proven that based on the test that we've done, that downtime on the motor is approximately reduced by 70% by doing monitoring and doing it in time. The other thing you also can do is now instead of having to do lubrication of bearings on a regular schedule, now you do it when the, when the sensor tells you that there is an actual need. In most cases, this also means that you have an extended time between when you actually have to do something. Because if you do it on a schedule, you do it on the safe side. So maybe eight, you only allow it to run 80% of the time before you do a relubrication of the bearing. Well, maybe it doesn't actually need that based on the running of operation that you have. So maybe you can actually run 120% of the time. And that allows you to extend the schedule. But it also means that because you're lubricating at the right time, you're also extending the lifetime of your components. Because maintenance comes when maintenance is needed. So if you need it earlier than the scheduled time, you're not missing a lubrication. So you're not running dry bearings. Also, as equipment is better maintained, the energy efficiency of your systems are also improved. And that gives approximately a 10% saving on your energy bill. Now, we have a lot of electrical motors in all of our facilities. Imagine just 10% of operation savings on the motors. That can be quite substantial and pay for the sensors in themselves. I also mentioned pumps. We have a couple of smaller pump manufacturers that we've been working very, very closely with to develop our sensors technology further. So we're going beyond the ABB equipment now also into the driven application and applying the sensor technology directly to the pumps. And we're also working to get some, some fan manufacturers included in this program as well, so that you can actually apply this directly on fan equipment as well. And that means that the whole rotating drivetrain from your hydraulics through the shaft, all the way to the motor and all the way out to the furthest transformer, you now have all of that linked into one knowledge base. So what happens? Well, typically what happens is we've got our nice normal operation, everything's running smoothly. Then something starts to go wrong, but we don't really notice. Well, then it fails, but then we do notice. And then we're gonna have to figure out what happened. And then we can start figuring out how do we solve it. But in all that time that we're figuring out how to solve it, we're missing production. We have downtime because it's not running. Then we get back to normal operation and then we can start improving our productivity. 
Well, imagine we could miss, we could remove that gap entirely. Then it would look like this. Instead, we don't have downtime. We can continue to optimize our productivity because we're running while it's going down. But instead of go starting to go down, we detect it before it starts to deteriorate. And now we can actually improve on where we were and then continue further because we're not spending all of our resources troubleshooting. Those same resources can now go into optimizing our production and improving the yield in the production. And that's where we want to be. So there's a lot of services around this. One of the ones I'm most excited about is actually what we call Remote Express. So we have the gateway solution where we can provide remote services. That's one way of doing it. But the other solution is we're working on integrating this into our DriveTune app. That means that you can connect your smartphone to the, dri to the drive. And then you, in that app, you can request service. That means you have a global call center that then looks at your, what, the information that you send from your app. And then if they need more information from the drive, they will send you a request. But you have to acknowledge on your phone. It's part of the safety. They can't get access to any information on the drive. They can't do anything on the drive unless they tell you in the app what they are intending to do. And you say, OK, I will allow you to do that. So even if our system gets hacked, then your phone has to acknowledge that the change that proposed is acceptable. And still, if your phone gets hacked, then you have to be within 75 meters with that phone from the device that you're trying to make changes to, because otherwise you're out of range and you cannot make changes. So there's a number of physical layers built into this to add to the safety. And on top of that, all of the ABB software is always being tested by a white hat, co hat company. So we have professional hackers trying to break the securities we built. And if they find something, then we cannot release. That's the process we have. So if they, th their report has a yellow flag, we cannot release. We have to fix it first. So that's the number of layers that we build into this because we know safety is important. Then there's training. We use digital service so that you have the digital twin, which means that you're trying to do something. Then there's a visualization of a digital assistant, if you will, that tries to do the same that you're trying to do. And then with that, you get a more look and feel of, rather than reading in a manual how things are supposed to be done, you have a visual aid that guides you through the process. We have the powertrain that I was talking about. And then we have, of course, the service organization that I already mentioned. But then we have another thing also, which is our over here, IB, install base. So if, if you link into the, the ABB install base program, then part of that becomes that we look at the operational data. We look at the time between installation, between last service visit. And then we give you advice on when is it time to take a look at your, at your installed drives. And that can be both the ABB drives that you bought from us. It can be the ABB drives you got from an OEM. But it can also include all of the drives in your facility if you want. That means that any manufacturer drives, we can add into the install base. And then we can, we can help guide your process around how to do maintenance and operate and, and monitoring on, on those equipment as well. Various types of virtual reality tools um, to, to visualize things. So all in all, trying to provide a holistic digital offering that helps you guide the process around condition monitoring and predictive maintenance in your facilities, and at the same time, adhering to the needs of the security systems that are in place in this industry. So if you have any questions or comments around uh, all of this, I'll be available at the ABB booth, and my colleagues as well can uh, answer any questions you might have around this. Thank you.